All right, guys, I've completely run out of ideas for videos. Now you guys, as my content panel, I need something quick. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? You can just talk about how awesome AMD is again for 20 minutes. There's not really a limit to how many times you can do that. You know, Warzone 2 is coming out soon. Your boy Generic here can just tell everybody to install ISLC again. You know, it has been about six months since your last dual rank video. It's been six months since our last dual rank video? Guys, did you know that four sticks of RAM is faster than two sticks of RAM? Now today we will be testing single rank and dual rank again, but we will be doing it with DDR5. Now what we have today are the fastest DDR5 sticks you can buy currently and the most expensive ones that you can buy. Notice how I didn't say that the most expensive ones were also the fastest ones. Now, the way ranks work on DDR5 is not the same way that they work on DDR4. I'm going to go over to a paint, a painting here, and I'm going to show you guys what I mean. I'm going to explain it for you. Okay, so I'm going to explain how this works with this uh, paint PNG here, right? So we're going to start, assume this stick here, this is your typical memory stick, DDR4. Now, DDR4, this entire memory module from this chip here all the way to this chip here. Let me actually let me do it in red. All of these memory chips are accessed at once by the memory controller. This one side is considered a single rank, right? Now you can get dual rank or two ranks two ways. You can simply just paste another stick of ram now you have two ranks the memory controller can access this one and this one right or the same thing goes for if you have memory modules on the other side of the dim right so you can have the memory controller accessing these ones and these ones on the back and that is also dual rank this is your four by eight and two by 16. So that's how it works for DDR4. Now DDR5 is a bit different, right? DDR5, you actually have two banks on one side like this. So the memory controller can go in and access both sides at the same time. This is why DDR5 is quote unquote so much faster than DDR4. This is the reason why. So you basically have dual rank per side of memory. So when you have two sticks of DDR5, you have one bank, two bank, three bank, four bank. So you already have quad rank with just two single sided sticks. Now, what happens when you add double sided? Well, now you have eight ranks and the memory controller can access all of them. Now we're here to find out if adding these extra banks will increase FPS. Now, why are we bothering? Because Zen 4 is coming and we need to collect some data before that platform comes out. Why is that? Because Zen 4, AMD has said that it maxes out around that 6,000 megahertz kind of ballpark, right? Now, if the only frequency we can achieve is 6,000 megahertz, we need to know if going dual sided quad rank, we need to know if this will give us a performance benefit, right? Because then you're gonna wanna buy dual rank DDR5 sticks for maximum Zen 4 performance. That is the goal of today's video. Now these Corsair sticks, these 6600 ones, these costed me 400 bucks. These 32 gig G skill ones, they're C30s, these costed me $600 for this, for this, dude, $600 for this memory alone. This video 
costed a thousand dollars to make maybe 1100 including the wigs and as you guys know all products reviewed on this channel are bought with my own money with supporter money no sponsorships no product samples only purely unbiased journalistic integrity now this is kind of a scientific video this memory is so cost prohibitive you like un under no circumstance should you buy this this is really just for us to find out i mean if somebody was a whale i'll leave my affiliate links down below if you are if you're gonna buy this kind of stuff but we need to find out when zen 4 comes out which memory should you recommend for that platform when it comes out so there's a couple of things we have to test here right well there's a few things we have to test we need to put this 64 gig kit into my unify x right then it's a two dim motherboard by the way if, if you don't have a two dim motherboard you don't buy ddr5 it's as simple as that now we need to see how far we can overclock these sticks because, you know, you might be able to get 6200 on Zen 4. We don't know yet, right? But we need to see if these sticks can go that far. Then once we find the max overclock of these sticks, we need to benchmark these sticks at the exact same frequency, at the exact same timings, to see if the quad rank itself gives a performance boost. And then we're going to overclock these ones to see if these can go faster than these ones. I'm assuming they will, but we'll find out soon, right? So we're gonna have three different sets of numbers for you here. Now we are recording this video September 15th. This is before the Zen 4 launch. We will be using a 12900K as our test system. So it is not directly comparable. Again, this is a scientific video just to see if the quad rank argument holds any weight with DDR5. Now, with that being said, let's go do some benchmarking to the Batmobile. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do here is show you guys the Ida pictures of the sticks, right? So these were the dual rank sticks. These are the 64 gig ones, right? Now, you can see here it's kind of a 6333 3, 3 frequency, right? Now, the reason why I did that, I actually can get them to 6400, but it requires too much memory controller voltage for what I'm comfortable running in a daily system. And just reducing the frequency down to 6333 made me drop the memory controller voltage by 0.5 right so that's massive so that's why i stuck with this one as a dailyable safe voltage right so 6333 c30 you got here 49 nanoseconds quite good right quite good now check these out with the single rank with the exact same speed and timings sub timings everything i just put these sticks in and it was the exact same now i could only get this to 52.5 nano 52 ish nanoseconds and all the bandwidths are a little bit lower right so super interesting right i'm gonna show you a little clip here okay so we got the corsair sticks in here right so 32 gigs now check this out so the, the timings and the speed are all the same right now i've clicked on this latency benchmark like 10 times and I cannot get it to go below 52, right? Which is super weird because the other one was hitting 48, 49, right? I've been doing this like literally for the last 10 minutes over it because it's kind of, it's, it's like the Ida latency is kind of a little bit of a, a lottery, right? So you have to do it 10 times. You pick the lowest one, right? So yeah, like, like check this out. 53, 52, 53, 52. So I've never... I've never seen this kind of behavior before, personally, where going to dual rank actually gives you, like, it get like, those, so these, what, these, where is it here? Not these ones, these ones. These dual rank sticks give you three nanoseconds for free on the latency, which makes perfect sense because I've actually never been able to break less than 50 nanoseconds without going to at least 6600 6700 on single rank right so i think we're gonna see some interesting results here these might be the goat for zen 4 look at that 
how many we've done. It's been consistently 52 the whole time. I, like, I'm not making this shit up, boys, right? That dual rank is a free three nanoseconds. So it seems like you get three nanoseconds for free going to dual rank with the exact same speed right so here is the 6800 numbers now right ddr5 6800 c30 now we have 110 gigabytes a second read and now we're into the 48s so this is identical to the uh the dual rank so we had to go 450 megahertz more to get the same latency as those dual rank sticks I thought that was an incredible find. I was not expecting that at all. Okay, I did a lot of benchmarks. We're just going to blast through these in Notepad. I'm not going to show you bars because when I actually tried to put them in a bar graph, all these numbers were so damn close to each other that the bars just looked exactly the same to each other. So it was it was like literally completely pointless. We're just going to blast through these, okay? So you can see single rank 6333 3, 3 in the middle, single rank 6800 on the right. And then dual rank 633 on the left. Now, the left ones and the right ones are basically identical within margin of error of each other. And then the single rank 6333 in the middle here, this is minus 3% on the 1% lows compared to the other two. So even just going from 6300 to 6800, you get a 3% boost, right? So that's why it's so uninteresting. All right, Rift Breaker up next. So for all three of these configs, they were all within margin of error of each other because that game does not scale with any of this stuff. Okay, Cyberpunk is up next. We did high, 1080p, 1440p. Now, the single rank one actually had a 6% performance deficit over the dual rank ones at the same speed in the 1% lows. Right? You can see it's 8 FPS here. Now, on the 6800, we had a plus 3 over the dual rank right so we had 133 fps in the lows and then 128 in the lows on the single rank uh the dual rank sorry and now this is all pretty much honestly margin of error except for this one this one is actually quite a bit lower than the other two but at 1440p yeah they're all the exact same that's why i didn't bother with 4k for these numbers right they're, they would all be the exact same for all these okay stray is up next we did our usual run same as all the other videos and they're all exactly the same within margin of error of each other at all resolutions, whatever. So this game didn't care about the whole config regardless. Okay, Spider-Man Remastered. We used high settings with ray tracing on this one just to see what would happen here. Now, the first two are the exact same within margin of error. And then the 6800 has a plus 3% on the other two. So this one is a little bit more bandwidth needy when it comes to that ray tracing stuff but honestly just take a step back and look at all the numbers here who cares right so far this has been the most uninteresting benchmarking video of my career seriously all right gears 5 is up next i wanted to just try this one because it scales with everything and nope nothing margin of error in all of them so literally when it comes to single player this is the last single player game all single player games don't care once you've hit a certain threshold of latency and bandwidth right around that 50 nanosecond mark this is a total nothing burger now last but not least warzone now look at this the dual rank 6333 kit performs eight percent better than single rank at the exact same frequency so but the 6800 kit when we got that latency down to that 49 has the exact same numbers as the dual rank kit so this is why warzone is the only game on the planet that scales this linearly with memory latency this is also why ddr4 is still faster than ddr5 in this game just because ddr5 latencies can't match ddr4 yet but i'm glad i tested this because of all the single player games i tested it was a complete nothing burger and i was surprised because the ida was actually showing lower latency but lo and behold warzone does show those latency differences down to that single percent so if you are a Zen 4 buyer and you are an esports player with Warzone 2 coming up, 
you're gonna want that dual rank kit it is actually unbelievable look at that and it's a consistent run to run no variance there so very 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 interesting results much better than i imagined this is actually a very very good kit of memory very well binned memory um i'm i'm hella surprised that it performed that well now you might be thinking the benchmarks were all the same not Warzone. See, here's the thing. The reason why I say DDR4 is faster than DDR5 in esports is because of those 1% lows. Games like Warzone and Apex and Battle Royale type games, you need the lowest latency possible. The bandwidth itself is mostly irrelevant. That's why you saw this kit at 6300 performing the same as the other kit at 6800 because their latency numbers match together, right? This kit gets a free three nanosecond performance boost at the same frequency, which is pretty wild. I like that a lot. Now, the other thing is this kit of memory is more difficult to overclock and easier at the same time. Let me explain. This kit is much harder on your memory controller, right? Very, very hard. It's actually hard to get this stuff to post at 6,000. It took me a while to figure out the correct voltages, right? Um, now, overclocking them ended up being easier once I figured it out because the maximum frequency is so low on these things. It's not like I'm dicking around with PLL voltages trying to get that last 100 megahertz. These are easy, man. This, you just fire and forget with these things. You know what I'm saying? And they perform the same as the faster kit and you get 64 gigs of RAM. You don't need it, but you know what I'm saying? But the problem is these are $200 more, right? Now, in terms of recommendations, right? If you are going to the Intel platforms like th the 13900K Z790 and you just have to have DDR5, I would probably still say you're gonna want the single-sided sticks just because there's no reason not to get these, right? We're not really limited by fabric speeds on the Intel platform, right? So if you can get 6,800 or 7,000 out of these things uh, for less money and it performs the same, then that's just like the better option, right? You, you get more bandwidth, the same latency. You don't get 64 gigs of RAM, but you don't need 64 gigs around unless you're on a workstation, right? Now we will revisit this when Zen 4 comes out, but I am gonna go ahead and assume that this 64 gig kit is gonna be the GOAT for Zen 4, just because you're, you're gonna want every nanosecond of latency that you can get on Zen 4, because we can't go to 6800, we can't go to 7000, do you know what I'm saying? And even then, that's only if you're a competitive esports player. If you are a single player gamer, there was no difference between all three of these configurations. One FPS margin of error on all of them. Anyway guys, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button, do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of today's testing. And as always, I don't care what you buy. If you're happy, I'm happy. You can buy whatever the hell you want. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later. You know, as an AMD buyer, there really is no limit to how many videos you can make telling me that I made the right decision.